globalization, media and intellectual property rights. Introduction Hello everyone. Welcome to the lecture on globalization, media and intellectual property rights. This lecture is a part of your paper on media and globalization. In this lecture, you will learn about the need for intellectual property rights vis-a-vis -vis media creation, distribution and consumption. This shall provide the context for placing the challenges the internet poses to traditional IPR and media regulation. As the internet transforms the media environment, we shall provide an overview of the evolving nature of IPR today. Since the early 16th century, intellectual property rights have encouraged innovation and inventions by allowing other creators to benefit both monetarily and in terms of reputation from the claim that they are the originators of a particular idea. In the context of the media environment, intellectual property rights have allowed authors and creators to claim a moral and economic right of ownership over works they have created. Though the international legal system in the context of IPR has evolved considerably since then, the fundamental idea has remained the same. It has formed the basis of business models as well as regulatory frameworks over creators' rights in media regulation. With the rapid expansion of the internet into global universal medium of media creation, consumption and dissemination, the media market has become global as well, dramatically reducing barriers between creators and distributors of media and their audiences. Though this has had several benefits for the media market, it has a profound impact on IPR frameworks across the world as well. We would now start with looking at intellectual property rights or IPR in short and media regulation followed by understanding how the rise of new media enabled by rapid technological advancements, that is, how the internet has impacted IPR protection and regulation. Intellectual property rights are legal instruments to protect creations of the mind, such as works of art, inventions, literature, music compositions and so on. They manifest in the form of inventions, literary and artistic works along with symbols, names, images and designs used in commerce. Intellectual property can be broadly classified into two categories. Industrial property, IP, that is used to protect inventions, trademarks, industrial designs and geographical indications. This goes hand in hand with trade and is usually owned by a company or organization. Copyright IP that covers the literally and artistic works such as novels, poems, plays, films, musical works, paintings, photographs and sculptures to name a few. Copyright related rights will also include the performing rights of artists, producers of phonograms in recordings and those of broadcasters in the radio television programs. IPRs are protected through dedicated national legislations. Consequently, they are valid only in the jurisdictions where they are applied for and validly granted. For instance, the Patents Act of 1970 the Trademarks Act of 1999, the Copyright Act of 1957 and the Designs Act of 2000 are the cornerstones of the IPR legal framework in India. Further, the specific legislations to protect geographical indications, semiconductor integrated circuit layouts as well as plants and their varieties. Now, we shall have a close look at the twin aspects of globalization of IP laws and copyright in media in order to understand IPR and media regulation. <music> Globalization 
ग्लोबलाइजेशन ऑफ आई पी लॉज द प्रोसेस ऑफ ग्लोबलाइजेशन इंक्लूड द एक्सचेंज ऑफ इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी अक्रॉस बॉर्डर्स द एडवांसमेंट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी and its normalization has been contingent upon technology exchange and transfer between societies most inventions artworks and creation have been inspired by others or have utilized techniques previously used and established with the internet specially the world has become a global village connected through a borderless cyberspace the lowering of borders has also seen a reaction from regulatory frameworks a globalized world where audiences consume media in far away markets has encouraged a push towards harmonization at the international level let us see some examples of such harmonization Bern Convention for the Protection of Literary and Artistic Works which was accepted in 1886 by the European countries. It formally mandated the various aspects of modern copyright law and introduced the concept of how copyright exists once the expression is fixed in a physical medium and not upon registration. Its defining characteristic is that it enforces a requirement on the signatories to recognize copyrights held by citizens of all other parties to the convention in the cartoon hordes of german norwegian french english and american authors surround a publisher who republishes their newly created works without attribution or royalties in foreign country as international law then allowed 1886 currently the bern convention has 172 parties and is still a cornerstone of ip protection in the world The UN also recognized the need to protect intellectual property and promote innovation. They set up a specialized agency called the World Intellectual Property Organization (WIPO) that currently has 186 members and is the administrating body for the Bern Convention. Another key agreement encouraging such harmonization has been the agreement on the trade related aspect of intellectual property TRIPS signed in 1995 which persists between all member nations to the World Trade Organization The obligations under the TRIPS require member nations to harmonize their domestic IP frameworks in accordance with agreement and lays down certain minimum standards of regulation for national governments to protect intellectual property. TRIPS requires WTO members to provide rights relating to copyrights, geographical indications including appellations of origin, industrial designs, integrated circuit layout designs, patents new plant varieties, trademarks, trade dress and confidential information. The agreement also covers enforcement procedures, remedies and establishes dispute resolution procedures. India has incorporated all requirements of the TRIPS agreement by making necessary changes to its domestic legal framework. Copyright and media. For the purpose of media regulation, the most relevant method of protection of IP is copyright, which has the largest sphere relative to the other IPRs. it protects the representation of ideas in words illustrations symbols or other representations in a fixed physical medium in many jurisdictions 
it is conferred automatically upon the individual creating an original work at the point at which the original work is fixed within a physical medium. Thus, an author owns the copyright over his original narrative at the moment when the narrative is transcribed on paper. The key aspect of copyright protection is the dichotomy between an idea and its expression copyright protection only covers the expression of an idea and not the idea itself. The Indian Copyright Act of 1957 accords copyright protection to an original literary, dramatic, musical or artistic work, a cinematograph film as well as a sound recording. More recently, software has also been brought within the fold of copyright protection. Any unlawful copying or distribution of copyrighted material can be addressed by copyright holder, allowing him or her to access court systems to penalize the offending distributor or violator. Such protection is not granted to the creator or author indefinitely. Copyright is an exclusive right that is time limited. This is because of the incremental nature of creation. All original work depends upon prior work in some form and thus an indefinite exclusive right can lead to an unreasonable restriction on innovation. Thus, after a copyright expires, the content that was erstwhile protected is opened up to the public domain for free use by any individual. In India, for literary, dramatic, musical and artistic works, the terms of the copyright is the lifetime of the author plus 60 years after which it can be performed or reproduced freely. For anonymous, posthumous and pseudonymous work, cinematographs, sound records and photographs, it is set at 60 years from when it was first published. In the USA, protection generally lasts for 70 years after the death of the author. As of now, all copyrightable work published before 1923 in the United States are in the public domain. Even during the persistence of a copyright, the holder cannot prevent the absolute utilization of any of the copyrighted material in any manner. There are legal doctrines which allow for the permissible and reasonable use of copyrighted material within legal limits. Two key doctrines have emerged throughout history. The doctrine of fair dealing. This originated as a common law doctrine, which carves a distinction between a legitimate, fair use of work from a malified, blatant copy of the work. This is a limited and restrictive exception that establishes an exhaustive list of permissible actions. These actions allow for the copying of any copyrighted material only for a limited and transformative purpose, such as to comment upon, parody or criticize it. It is covered in India under Section 52 of the Indian Copyright Act of 1957. The doctrine of fair use. This has a wider ambit than the former, as it is constantly evolving and allows for new, fair and bona fide use of a work. The importance of such doctrines, which allow the public to use a copyright in a fair and bona fide manner, was also recognized by the WT. Article 13 of the TRIPS, Trade Related Aspects of Intellectual Property Rights, places an obligation on signatories to recognize and implement the doctrine of fair dealing. The Delhi University photocopy case was a turning point with respect to how doctrine of fair dealing is used in India. In 2012, three major publishers, Oxford University Press, Cambridge University Press and Francis and & Taylor filed a lawsuit against the Delhi University and a photocopying store. Rameshwar Photocopy in New Delhi for producing portions of books copyrighted by them 
for the creation of course packs for students of Delhi University. The practice of preparing course packs has been around for years, not only in Delhi University, but also across the country. The case led to widespread outrage among the college students nationwide that supported the university's position and stressed on the fact that educational use was covered by the exception under Section 52 of the Copyright Act of 1957. The Delhi High Court held that the educational exception under Part 1 of Section 52, Doctrine of Fair Dealing, of the Copyright Act of 1957 was wide enough to cover the acts of photocopying and the creation of course packs by the university for its students. In March 2017, the three publishers withdrew the suit, becoming a significant victory in educational access in India. The manner in which the Delhi High Court has dealt with this case is indicative of how India is willing to interpret such doctrines to suit the needs of the Indian society and make its own mark on IP jurisprudence. But what does the rise of internet and new media mean to IPR regulation? What are the new obstacles and challenges thrown up by a rapid progress of technology to media regulation and IPR? The impact of the internet on IPR protection. The rise of new media and cross-border trade of goods and services digitally through the internet has had a profound impact on IPR. Due to the nature of this borderless technology, IPR regulatory frameworks have been faced with several challenges. These are enumerated as follows. Pamela Samuelson details out six characteristics of intellectual products made available digitally that make it difficult for existing IP law to adjust and extend traditional protections to such digital products. These include number 1. Ease of replication The internet has made it extremely easy to replicate copyrighted material. What earlier required expensive machines such as a printing press can now be done through digital technologies that allow for the easy and untraceable replication of media in digital form. Number 2. Ease of transmission Distribution channels online allow for ready and simultaneous copies of digital work to be transmitted across vast distances in an easy and cheap fashion. Number 3. Ease of modification and manipulation Digital media, unlike traditional media, is extremely plastic. Text or musical works expressed through bytes can be easily changed by consumers of a, such media through a variety of software applications that can run on private computers. Examples of digital sampling techniques in modern music or digitally manipulated photographs are an example of this problem. This expands the scope of derivative works completely creating new issues to be decided by courts on almost a daily basis. Number 4. Equivalence of works in digital form Digital media allows for the multi-channel delivery of a particular copyrighted work that is generally equivalent irrespective of the mode of delivery. For instance, an interactive website can also serve the same information as a literary work. Number 5. Compactness of works in digital form Digital media is extremely easy to transmit and distribute due to the relatively compact nature of data. Vast amounts of information can be held in the form of small physical items. For instance, a single Kindle can hold over 1000 books. Number 6. New ways to search and link media Finally, the internet has allowed for dynamic ways to search and link. The network nature of the internet allows individuals to extract information from media irrespective of location of the method of representation. 
Therefore, the function of libraries and indexes are now served by easy-to-use technology. These issues have allowed for a specific form of internet piracy to emerge as a crucial form in global markets. Millions of copyrighted songs, movies and other such materials are being uploaded on various P2P, peer-to-peer -peer networking sites such as YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. It is extremely difficult today to control who copies and circulates various forms of media online. And traditional copyright holders such as publishers, music record businesses or movie studios are struggling to enforce their rights in the face of these new distribution systems. Further, the vast volumes of data available online make it difficult to impose any monitoring mechanism without incurring prohibitive costs or restrictions on internet technologies. Now, let us analyze how copyright protection regulations and policy have responded to these contradictions in the wake of rapid large-scale technological change. We shall have a look at the techno-legal copyright protection mechanisms and alternatives to traditional IP protection. Techno-legal copyright protection mechanism With the internet, the focus of copyright law has shifted away from protecting illegal or unlicensed sales of such material to restrict access and use to digital copies of their work. Across the world, new techno-legal solutions are being mooted to ensure that IP online can be protected. These include the following. Digital Copyright Laws One principal example is the Digital Millennium Copyright Act DMCA, which establishes a notice and takedown regime. Under this system, if a copyright holder becomes aware of an infringement online, he issues a notice to the concerned internet service provider that is hosting the infringing material. These service providers are then afforded a safe harbour that protects them from being penalised for hosting such content. As long as they take down such infringing material through various technical measures within a reasonable period of time. Digital Rights Management Systems Though various definitions of such systems exist, it is generally described as a set of technical and security mechanisms deployed on top of digital assets to prevent their unlawful replication and distribution. Alternative Distribution Mechanisms Owner of copyright are also harnessing internet technologies to license their work to hundreds of digital services that would in turn serve customers globally providing them with a legal platform to access music on the internet. On-demand services such as Spotify and personalized streaming services like Mixed Radio have been providing such facilities to listeners. Apple Music-like streaming services have once again contributed to declining illegal downloading of music by providing users a convenient yet legal platform to access and download music. These mechanisms seek to disincent the illegal copyright of digital media by encouraging cheap alternatives. Alternatives to traditional IP protection The rise of the internet has also encouraged a new approach towards intellectual property itself. Several movements have sought to make existing IP systems much more flexible. A key example of this is Creative Commons Schema, springing from the copy left movement that encourages the distribution of software and other content at no charge or without any commercial gain among non-commercial users of the content. Copy left symbol and Creative Commons. Creative Commons CC launched a set of copyright licenses free for public use in 2002. The Free Software Foundation inspired this movement and Creative Commons aims to build a more flexible copyright in an increasingly restrictive surrounding. 
These licenses are related to creative works like websites, scholarship, music, film, photography, literature, courseware and so on. The biggest example of this movement is the website Wikipedia, which uses the GNU free documentation license. Conclusion Starting with developing an undertaking of IPR and regulation, we went on to know about the globalization of IP laws and formation of international bodies. We also became aware of the importance of copyright, the most relevant method of protection of IP for the purposes of media regulation. We understood how the doctrines of fair dealing and fair use are employed to allow for the permissible and reasonable use of copyrighted material within legal limits by legal bodies. One such example we quoted was a Meshwari photocopy case in 2013 where the Delhi High Court delivered a resounding verdict in favour of educational access in India. We then moved on to the second part of the lecture where we learnt about the impact of internet and policy responses. Here we talked about the changing nature of infringement owing to the ease of replication transmission, modification, manipulation and access afforded by new media. We saw some techno-legal solutions to ensure copyright compliance like digital copyright laws and alternative mechanisms of distribution. In summation, we learnt about the purpose of IP and copyright in the context of protecting the rights of creators of various media. We touched upon the national and international legal regimes governing IP. We also gathered an overview of the challenges posed by the internet to IP laws as well as various techno-legal responses thereto. As the internet continues to expand, Intellectual property rights frameworks shall have to continuously adapt. One hopes that new ways of looking at IP rights shall also be explored by businesses and legal regimes in the future. Thank you dear students.